We're losing the, the um, rainforest where the great apes live, the rate of about a football field across the world per second. So, you know, we've lost half of our tropical rainforest, approximately, I can't remember in how many years. And all the great apes are uh, endangered. Some of them are, you know, very endangered indeed, like the West African chimpanzee. The gorillas are just losing out to the oil palm plantations. And it's, you know, it's the big companies coming in, logging and mining. It's the roads that are being made through the forest. And um, it's the butchering of them in the African forests that led to the HIV AIDS pandemic. And it's the trafficking of these animals to wild animal meat markets in Asia that's led to the SARS epidemic and now to the COVID-19 pandemic. And you get this spillover of a virus, or it could be a bacteria, from an animal to a person. And then when it bonds with something in a cell in a human body, you get a new disease. And that new disease might be contagious, passing from the person who's got this new combination uh, to another person. And that's what's happened with COVID-19. But, you know, we, we've got to realize it's our disrespect of the environment, the cutting down the forest, pushing animals in closer contact with each other, providing opportunities for the spillover of a virus to an animal. And it can also happen in our intensive farms as well. I mean, we've been relatively lucky. This was incredibly contagious, this pandemic. But the percentage of people who catch it and die is relatively low. But imagine the next one, and there will be another if we continue to disrespect animals in the environment. Imagine one with a death rate more comparable to Ebola. That's going to be a total nightmare. But are we going to learn? We haven't been listening to the scientists studying these zoonotic diseases, and it ties in with climate change, which is an existential threat. We'll get through the pandemic, but climate change, unless we change our behavior, is going to be the end of life on Earth as we know it. So, you know, this for me is why conservation is so important. And it's why this program I began for young people, Roots and Shoots, getting young people to understand the importance of protecting nature because we're part of the natural world. Just because we live in the middle of a city doesn't mean we're not dependent on the natural world because we are for clean air and clean water and for food and clothing and all the rest of it. So is this pandemic going to be a turning point or will we go back to business as usual? Are we going to learn? We're supposed to be the most intellectual creature that's ever lived. Are we going to learn? <laughs>